Not a That's lot. A good way to put it. So they're in the game, beef though. Are they we are. Could we going into that right now? So sure, I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it here in on cast. It's gonna be a chill cast tonight. I think so. We just finished up some mid wars. That was pretty chill. Yeah, that's not you know. Well, that was not chill. That come was on. those those big tempest ultimates and, crazy and, and big small ultimates. Yeah, man, man. my energy might be gone from that. Oh, it was uh, it, pretty fun, but uh, we definitely do have a hype match to get you amped up, Breaky. Yeah, and well, I mean, like you said, we don't know too much about these teams. What a joke! Definitely put up a, a pretty good fight there against the Pew Fan Club, and both these guys to to get this far in the tournament. I mean, they have to have at least done something right, and, yeah. well, once again, we're going to be going back into this lockpick mode. Yes, we are We are still uh, <laughs> We're still stuck with lockpick <laughs> uh, all the way through Thursday here for the Alienware Tournament, of course, but after this Thursday, from now, from here on out, including Holland Tour Season 2, we'll be going to the captain's pick, but here we are with lockpick. As you said, if you got to this point, you got to be doing something right uh, here for the North American Challenge, so we'll see what, between what a joke and there goes your shrine what they can bring to the table, but we are in that locking stage as far as what's going on so far. You have the Rally Ophelia coming out, and then Monkey King Moon Queen being blind banned here by TGYS. So a lot of junglers actually left open as a result of that blind banning stage. So far, Tempest is locked up. You still got Keeper and Parasite on that board. We'll see if they eventually get locked up here, but that's definitely what I'm eyeing at least. Yeah, you, you mentioned that Moon Queen uh, blind ban there, and that's... Not one that we've actually been seeing too much of over the past couple of months. It feels like since the runic shift, banning out Moon Queen, banning out Artillery, your hard carries really has died down a, a pretty significant amount. Yeah. Rather, instead, banning out heroes like Rally in combination with your junglers, and then every once in a while, maybe a specific hero to try to counter an enemy team. But uh, choosing to get rid of the Moon Queen, not feeling comfortable in that area. On top of that, we got Master of Arms and Empath, so got a lot of supports coming onto the board right here, and of course the versatility that Master of Arms brings. Going to make him a pretty high-tier pick. Yeah, would not be surprised to see him get taken out of the lock pool, but as you would expect, it is a strong lock pool with that said. The Empath lock, though, coming out from what a joke, so we'll see if maybe they get their carry of choice to kind of go with an Empath, of course. You know, there's many of carries out there that definitely work well with her, from the Sand Raid to the Predator. To the Berserker. Just saying. TGYS, their final lock going to be coming out before we enter that. Again, you still got Keeper of the Forest and Parasite still in that pool. Not going to be locked up here. Sure enough, they go Torture as the final lock. So now with the banning stage coming up, you would you would expect both of those heroes to possibly be banned now. But again, we'll see. I, I, you know, I was doing a little bit of research on these two teams. Again, what a joke. We did get the chance to see them. They look solid. TGYS, uh, they seem like they're in between 16 and 1,700 players as far as their MMR goes. I know you know, it only says so much. But it's probably fair to say their experience, especially the competitive scene, may be lacking uh, for the most part. But uh, we'll see again how much their knowledge is and how well they do here against a solid team. And what a joke. But the banning phase coming out. Fade and Warby so far. Yeah. There's a lodestone taken out. I, I expect that um, the blue player over here, Manhua, probably won't go for bans on these junglers. And oh, yeah, yeah, going to not. actually uh, leave them unbanned. And now Pink will probably respond in kind so that each team can get one jungler. <laughs> no. Even the Forest is going to be banned out. So Parasite left available for first pick here. That would be sacrificing heroes like Pebbles, Engineer, um, definitely two very, very strong heroes right there. So you got to weigh your options right now and see if there's somebody on your team comfortable enough. I, I don't really remember. Actually, not Junglin. I think he was um, he was playing the Keeper of the Forest beforehand. But, no, they will opt to for that Pebbles instead of Parasite. So yeah. really feeling the initiator and maybe not comfortable running a Parasite in this lineup. Yeah, I was kind of – I'm trying to sit here and think how I feel about the banning of the Keeper of the Force at the very end. Like you were saying, you know, maybe just don't ban it altogether at pace and then just go ahead and go to at least get uh, – and now obviously if you don't ban the Keeper, then Keeper could very likely be picked up by a joke. But then that opens the door for something like a Parasite. Like you mentioned, another strong hero, perhaps that Pebbles instead. But on top with, – with the ban of Keeper of the Forest. It did make it so, if you go Parasite here, if you're what a joke, you could still go Tempest, but it does make the, you know, a laning Tempest, which isn't oh, as powerful. Sure. I think it's a pretty overall, pretty good overall consensus amongst the competitive scene. He just really shines in that jungle, and that's usually where you want to have him. So, um, Pebbles is that first pick, though. TGYS following up 
A little interesting. Hammerstorm going to be coming out. Hey, I love Hammerstorm. Oh, oh, oh. Why not throw a Myrmidon in there as well, right? So You know what? I mean, this already kind of reeks of a tri-lane to me. Throwing back to the, uh, yeah. the tri-lane meta. And, well, I mean, Hammerstorm, Myrmidon, that was definitely a very, very strong combination. You throw that in there with uh, any kind of farming range here or even another stunner, and you, you have the makings of an extremely strong tri-lane. With that being said, picking these two heroes uh, right away, it does kind of give a little bit of information over to the Legion side. They might try to set up something that is going to be able to counter that tri-lane, really, uh, that might be able to just survive there and then dodge that tri-lane themselves. But, I mean, that tri-lane could certainly be a big threat, especially if you get another really, really strong hero in there. Yeah, uh, so we'll see what, what a joke ultimately decides to go with, uh, considering that. But, but yeah, I, I, I'm definitely, I, you know, that. They did? Did they actually lock up that empath? No, they did not. They, they weren't the ones to actually lock up the empath themselves. So. Oh! Oh, that's fun. What a joke coming through here. <laughs> oh. This game just got a little more interesting. Wretched Hag Sir Bensington coming out the door here. Now, you know, again, talking about Sir Bensington, I personally, you know, thought we the only chance we'd see him, at least in a, in a legitimate team or lineup or whatnot, would be maybe with the sand rate, that global presence, being able to really catch people off guard that way. But uh, what a joke over here saying we don't need a sand rate to make it work. We're going to make it work here just fine. I'm excited for that. Yeah, it's definitely a hero that I'm actually not super familiar with myself. I mean, I've seen him a few times in TMM here and there, but uh, definitely a hero I've never seen in competitive scrims or otherwise. So really excited to see how they uh, how they work with this here and really what kind of a laning situation they want to take. Mm -hmm. Obviously a hero that they're feeling comfortable enough with that they will be playing this in a best of one elimination or yeah, elimination yeah, match. For these so guys. <laughs> it's kind of all on the line here but uh, Bensington definitely going to be a lot of fun and with that, uh, with the joust I mean he does have a bit of an escape mechanism so we might even see him put into a, kind of a solo role We'll see here. But Witch Slayer going to be coming out for the Hellborn team. Now, I'm not a huge fan of the Witch Slayer pick for two reasons. Yeah, One, because if they – I wouldn't be surprised if this team up here, honestly, maybe tries to use him part of that trial lane yeah, in more of a support role and not a huge fan of Witch Slayer just in general as a support. Would rather see him in that solo. But on top of that, he is a squishy himself. And this is already the makings of a very aggressive team over here. And what a joke. Sir Bensington, no doubt, a very gank-oriented hero, especially with his ultimate. And yeah, they're going to definitely look to shine with that, I'm sure. Let's see, see the Tempest first pick out of the lock pool. There's the Deadwood Torture coming out for uh, TGYS, and then Master of Arms actually going to finish things out. So a little more, in a sense, global presence there. I, you know, Sir Bensington, obviously, he's not necessarily global, but uh, with the Staff of the Master, he is. Without the Staff of the Master, it's still pretty long range on that uh, on that ultimate, the Nightfall 5,000 range. So yeah, you can actually go a pretty good distance, to say the least. So 5,000, pretty good distance, yeah. that's for sure. And was that a synchronized ready? Just about. That actually, I mean, that, that actually sounded pretty perfect that to me. was one of the best I've ever seen. <laughs> not going to lie. That is not bad. I mean, even going back into the days of three years ago, in your early days of casting, I mean, when it was a lot more common to do those synchronized readies, yeah. I mean, very well done here by the Legion what team. A, a bit of intimidation, perhaps. Emperor's team, yeah, that's actually true. I wouldn't be surprised if Emperor's team is <laughs> training his team to make sure every single game. Ten push-ups if they do not get it perfect. Fight for there everyone. There you go. Panman's got the info for <laughs> us. And I, I want to talk about this Hellborn team a little bit here. You talked about uh, Witch Slayer possibly going to be used in that solo lane, possibly going to be used in that tri lane. With the pickup of Torture, he really does kind of interchange with Witch Slayer on those roles. Can yeah. solo farm can really utilize that farm or could be incorporated into this tri-lane. Outside of that, though, I mean, there are some preposterously strong stuns here on the Hellborn team and some extremely long duration stuns. Two seconds on Hammerstorm, two and a half seconds on Witch Slayer when maxed out, two seconds on Torture when maxed out, and then that Weed Field going to be a full two seconds as well. Mm -hmm. I, there is a lot of lockdown if they can open up on you properly here from the Hellborn team. A lot of it uh, kind of hard to hit stuff, though, with that graveyard stun, with the weed field, and the chain reaction. You really do want to have a lead stun. It's going to come into how well they're able to execute with that hammer storm to lead. Yeah, I, 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 
the, you know, I was kind of criticizing the Witch Slayer pick a little bit earlier when it, when it first happened, but with the way they finished off, as long as they run the Torture, if they're going to be doing a tri lane, which, mm -hmm. again, it could very likely be with the Torturer, Hammerstorm, Myrmidon here, that is fine. I like that, you know, you send your or you send a solo Witch Air as well as a solo Deadwet, you could definitely make that work. Um, and on top of that, they too, sure, they might be somewhat squishy themselves, but they also are going for somewhat of an aggressive team, no doubt, as both teams really did didn't make their teams that way. So, uh, as we were talking about earlier, you brought up the point, Beef, that with these teams where they aren't as experienced, you know, not as known, especially on Hawkcast one now, they were, you know, they get the chance to shine, and they, they usually play the, those more aggressive, those more fun-paced lineups, and that, that seems like the yeah. kind of game, at least the makings of a game that we have here. Because, I mean, you look at carry presence on either side, it's not necessarily uh, there in, in, in the most, you know, again, like your Sam Wraith, your Dark Leader, something like that. Obviously, they do have a Wretched Hag over here, for what a joke, and that's no thing to to scoff at. But uh, and the, as is a hammerstorm, as I, I love the hammerstorm carry personally. So yeah, I got that master of arms as well. But he's going to play support dang here. Sure, he's playing support. Yeah, yeah. And uh, well, just taking a look at the lanes here that are possible for that legion team. Probably going to be a oh. wretched hang in one of the solo roles. Right, it it comes down on. to whether they're going to suicide this Sir Bensington or not. And I kind of think that's not what's going to happen. Well, maybe. He's kind of heading up there. Was just donated uh, some regen. Yes, yeah, stacked regen. Sir Bensington going to be going long lane crusher. So really, really nice there to be able to see something like that. Master of Arms and Pebbles going to be heading mid. And Tempest will, in fact, be holding down the jungle. So things are uh, shaping up pretty well here for the Legion. My eyes are definitely going to be on this long lane. Yeah, no, if I'm not, again, I'm not a Sir Bensington player. I've never played the hero before, I'm not going to lie. I mean, as, as, as is the case with really heroes that aren't in tournament rules, obviously he did get introduced now. Uh, but if I'm not mistaken, his job stability, you don't actually have to click it on anything. You, it's actually just a directional thing. Uh, do you know? I believe so. Okay, yeah. So with that said, at, you know, so I'm kind of sitting here looking as far as the suicide potential. Obviously, he has a getaway with that said. He does level up the joust first. Um I think it could definitely work out just fine uh, in this case. It seems like, it's especially with that getaway. And also the Lance. The Lance ability, actually, I would assume could, could be pretty good for getting some creep kills every now and then on top of that. Uh, being the extended range, it kind of turns him into a ranged hero. Passively increases your attack range by 50 all the way to 200. So... Um, that's also another kind of a cool utility that he brings to the table and why this why this whole idea of being being suicide could actually work out fairly effectively. So interested though definitely to see not jungling here. <laughs> definitely remember him now. Uh, <laughs> playing uh, playing the Sir Bensington. So and he definitely did do well for this what a joke team in the previous matches that we were casting during those Haunt Tour qualifiers. And Breaky I did actually just check here. It is a target position spell on Joust, so we'll be able to use that as an escape mechanism. Yeah. But as expected, they are the Hellborn team, that is, are running this tri-lane. Going to be aggro tri-lane bottom. They did put the Witch Slayer in here, so you weren't a fan of that. And I, I kind of have to agree with you. I didn't expect this one. Witch Slayer is really, really level dependent for his spells, mm -hmm. uh, especially that graveyard spell. At low level is actually really, really bad on damage and yep. stun duration. Barely over a one second stun duration and only hitting for 60 damage uh, when compared with some of these other heroes. Really not bringing a whole lot to the table, but it looks like they will disband that tri -lane very, very quickly. Now going to be moving Myrmidon into the middle lane. This is going to be a tough dual lane for the Hellborn. Yeah, I, I, I don't like this. I, and this is even more of a reason why I just simply would prefer the Torture in this case. Because what you could have you left the Torture behind here, and a Torture Hammer Storm late is just fine. A uh, Myrmidon, or actually, I would have preferred to leave the Myrmidon with the Hammer Storm and then send uh, the Torture with a Deadwood, even, you could argue. But it's just, this is just kind of, it's turning out to be pretty awkward here for the Hellborn team as far as their lane setup. You have a Myrmidon Deadwood. That's not a combination right there. That seems to be the best synergistic. Now, if he can land a Rotten Grasp, it will set up an easy weed field. So in that sense, they definitely have potential. Uh, but then, yeah, I would say that, you know, it's either trial for him. I forget which one actually brought this up, but his level one stun is basically like an extra auto attack in the end. I mean, sure, it does apply. It applies a, it applies a one second stun, which is it, pretty minimal, but it could set up other stuns. But it only does 60 damage on top of that, and it costs you 100 mana. So, yeah, it, the fact that he could be under level now, it's not a trial anymore, so it won't be as hurt, of course. But again, just not a huge fan. We'll see how it progresses, though. As this game moves on here, of course. But as far as the lanes have adjusted now, 
Um, of course, you got Tempest doing his thing in the jungle. Sir Bensington going 1v1 on top, and then Pebbles, Master of Arms, matching up against this Deadwood Myrmidon lane here in the middle. So I assume Pebbles could actually have a fairly good time still, but there is some kill potential with this animal well, size. <laughs> right now, Myrmidon actually has a double damage hitting for 100, and Pebbles, with only .3 armor, is taking a considerable amount of that damage whenever those autos do connect. At this point, only one or two of them has so Pebble's not too worried. Uh, looks like Ratchet Hag taking some damage there in the bottom lane as Hammerstrom threw out a hammer, but no real follow-up going to be coming up. And like you said, with that level 1 graveyard, not a huge threat for that Ratchet Hag. Top lane, though, Sir Bensington uh, already expending half of his regen. The CS situation sitting at 16 and 2 for Benzie, yeah. though, as opposed to the 11 and 2 of Torture. So as long as he's got the regen, he seems to be doing very well in this long lane. Yeah, I mean that's you, know, you can even that's, that's another reason why if you had Witch Slayer up here with the, with the manage the power drain ability, it could also be quite the harassment for the Sir Benzington to deal with, on top of just you know the the range as well. So again, I you know I keep I keep going back to it, but going back to the top lane, Torture actually getting got on by Sir Benzington right here. He goes in with that what is it even called the Joust. I guess that's simple enough right there. Easy. <laughs> and actually uh, putting the stun out, applying some good damage, but in the end, no kill happening. Middle lane, some back and forth harassment continuing, but... Oh, and again, Wretched Hag blinks away. That's the second time in a row Hammerstorm stun has not hit Wretched Hag because of the disjoint, and that's a good chunk of mana of his being used and getting absolutely nothing out of it. Well-timed by Hag there at the bottom lane, so... But yeah, Sir Pensington, he's having a hell of a time there at the top lane. As far as his farm is concerned. Yeah, chose to go the bottle as well, so going to be able to bottle up an Invis root mm. in the top lane, hitting level 5 as well uh, with those two points in Joust. Going to be able to do a significant amount of damage, but does donate that Invis. Over to Master of Arms, they're looking to set something up. Bottom lane, Wretched Hag getting away again. And this Witch Slayer Hammerstorm combination, it kind of has some strong stuns, but some slow projectiles, some sh slow animations, and Wretched Hag is doing a pretty good job of surviving in this bottom lane. Mm -hmm. And we do see opening here in the middle lane. Stalagmites come out. Pebbles trying to get close enough for the Chucky. Does get in there. We'll get the kill. However, the weed field on top of the Ryan Grasp. Devil going to go for the counter kill. Bottom charge is being used, though, and Manwa here will end up surviving. Dusty actually getting credit for the bloodless kill, playing that Master of Bombs. It was a good attempt at a turnaround there. Uh, by the Myrmidon Deadwood combination, but obviously wasn't enough damage in the end as uh, the Invis room came through right there. Poor Deadwood, would, if he had had one more charge on his log, yeah. uh, would have been able to get the kill there, but unfortunately did not. And uh, he's going to have to be satisfied with at least living himself. Hmm. His bottom lane, though, Wretched Hang was, was taking more stuns. Master of Arms has gone through quite a few mana potions, keeping that mana up, but top lane, I keep seeing the uh, the action going on up there. The Sir Bensington is really being relentless, knowing that he has the bottle. He's going to have somewhat consistent reach end coming in. He, he's not afraid to use spells and really get in there and start poking this torch. Well, yeah, I love uh, the on-use effect of that lance line, as it's called. I mean, that's a good chunk of burst damage. It's like direct guaranteed burst damage that he's, that he's doing. Uh, making it 420 at range as well as up to 340 magic damage. And it really is doing a good job of really boxing out the torch. And actually, Torchor choosing to go for a blood chalice here, as far as his first item is concerned. Not not the not the friendliest of items for a hero like a torture. You know, is already kind of fairly squishy in the first place and doesn't have that way to regen necessarily earlier on. I mean, as the game progresses, it, it can be just fine, but not usually the item you want to go for as far as that regen is concerned. So. Needs to be a definitely concerned about that. As by the way, uh, Sir Bensington is level six now as well. So this is where that nightfall, uh, his ultimate, can come into play. And actually, I'm curious. Yes. It's five thousand range, right? So, okay, so you see five thousand range is basically right here. It's, for, it's to the just past the top rune from the top uh, lane. So it is three thousand level one. Three thousand level one. Okay, so even actually, yeah. more, so yeah, it's actually not that far <laughs> when you really put it into. Uh, I believe it's the same as uh, a max rank Pharaoh hook there. Okay. So, just to kind of give another Good idea, yeah. impression right there. Bottom lane, Tempest and Ratchet Hag maybe looking to set up a kill. There's the graveyard stun going off. Sonar Scream out on to Witch Slayer. The Glacial Blast trying to keep him alive. Nice Hex, but Hammerstorm mm. had backed off. A little bit of uh, lack of communication on the Hellborn side of things prevents what may have otherwise been a Wretched Hag kill, but Witch Slayer also is very, very low. 
So uh, just a tense situation there in the bottom jungle. Yeah, I still think he might need one more auto attack, even if he got that one off. So it might not have mattered in the end. But like I said, it's the miscommunication, no doubt, right there between the Hammerstorm and Witch Slayer. And that's unfortunate because they had a chance. Witch Slayer wants to dive this. But Wretched Hack, he knows something's up. He's going to continue eating the trees and get in that region and uh, pl continue to play safe. Now, speaking of Tempest, obviously he went in for the gank right there. He's going to go back to farming for the time being. He does have his... Uh, Ring of Sorcery finished. Top Lancer, Benzing to go for the Joust. Look at that passive, man! He just used his uh, Lance along right there. It is level 4 now, and it dropped Torture a good third of his life, it looked like, right there. And in this laning phase, especially, if you get that maxed out, clearly it has a lot of damage potential. So, uh, fun to see that. Sir Benzington actually continuing to lead the way and go for a minute. That's also another uh, intriguing factor right there as far as this game is concerned. But with that said, Hammerstorm is doing a good dandy job here at the bottom lane. Tap that kill. Playing the Hammerstorm. <laughs> Want to make sure of that. Tap that kill. <laughs> He's certainly having a good time. Tempest is coming around right now. Mm. Not going to be able to find any openings. And without boots, I mean, doesn't really have a, a whole lot of time to really get in there. And now he might be the one that's in trouble. The Hellborn team still trying to find their first kill of the game. Look at the Witch Slayer and the Hammerstorm that are still just roaming around the sides, trying really, really hard to find an angle on Ratchet Hag. So far, they have not been able to, but is Hammerstorm going to try to close distance on the Tempest? There's the two-second stun. Is any assistance going to be no. coming? Looks like Hammerstorm is just going to be turning around and running away. The assistance is coming from Master of Arms. There's the charge shot with the Tempest Elementals there and the Acid Bomb. Hammerstorm going to be trying to run away. There's the... Graveyard stun into the weed field, but the Bat Blast didn't return. Richard Hag blinking forward, but has her mana stolen. Now she's going to be the one that's in trouble. Master of Arms throwing out a forked lightning, but Richard Hag gets obliterated by the Willowmaker. Oh, man, it's not done just well, maybe it is. It is. <laughs> it's going to be done. So uh, I will say that was a, it was a fairly sloppy fight right there. I mean, definitely, again, the, 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 the miscommunication, and I kind of wonder if they're even on Skype, to be honest. I mean, there's definitely some... Not being on the same page here between several of these heroes on the Hellborn side, but in the end, they actually get the kill on the Wretched Hag, so it, it does work out in their favor, so that actually is the, the very good news for them. Uh, I, I will say as well, I'm a little disappointed Sir Benzington did not port to the bottom lane, and, and actually that, I, I'm very questionable about that even. I mean, he has a Homecoming Stone even. I don't know if he just happened to manage to pick that up, but... He could have been very useful down there at the bottom lane, as could have Torturer for that matter as well. But neither one does port down there. They both end up staying in the top lane and continue to farm. Sir Benzington is going to sit around for a room. Meanwhile, back to the middle lane, though. Devon gets tucked in. Hammerstorm is here, though, looking for a spot. Devon with the wrong grass is not going to hit. They will get the stun on the Master of Arms. Oh, there's a follow-up from Witch there. The auto attack's coming out. Sir Benzington, I hear the horn. Where is he? He is over here. He went on a Deadwood, actually, but Deadwood does not drop. The Weedfield hits on Sir Benzington. The wrong grasp is not going to connect, though. There's a way for from Everdon doing the minus magic armor. Witch there uses a silver bullet to finish off Sir Benzington. So he tried to get Deadwood. He, he got not the able to do so. off, but the joust missed. Mm. Wasn't able to get the damage on that. Wasn't able to get the disable. And uh, unfortunately, as a result, Deadwood did live. Sir Benzington falls. And uh, things coming up. Hellborn there in the middle lane. Pebbles really, really wanted that Deadwood, but uh, wasn't quite able to. And a nice rotation from Hammerstorm coming in. And really the rest of the team. The Myrmidon and the Witch Slayer both showing up there near the end. Helping to get those kills. So... Really well, well done overall. And uh, the Selborne team I mean, definitely looks just a little bit more coordinated perhaps at this point. Yeah, oh, they are going to go in right here once again. Pebbles, a double stun coming out. No weed fuel because he just used it. It doesn't matter though. Pebbles, way too much damage happening to him. And nothing more Master of Arms could have done. He already used a charge shot. He put the goo down says, get away. But that does not scare them off. Deadwood at the bottom lane. He takes some stuns. Tempest did have an elemental void. They chose not to use it right there, though. It was right at the tower. And not sure if they can get the kill. Torture in the meantime. Joust does hit the passive as well. The Lance along doing the damage. But Torture will barely survive as he does get away. And actually has another scare picked up. And he's going to turn that into a Ring of Teacher, actually. So um, and the, perhaps a Gnome's Wisdom going to be coming out. So that's more of an old school Torture build. Seems like a lot more than new school Torture stuff. been going to Light Brand here in this case. But you know, nothing wrong with a... Uh, Gnome's Wisdom in the end. I, I will say, though, I mean, for a, I saw Deadwood in this game, like, I think because they had Deadwood, but actually he's on their, he, Deadwood's on their team, so 
The physical damage presence isn't really the most, honestly, on this Legion side. I believe, in fact, yeah, Joust and Lancelot are both magic damage themselves, as well as his ultimate on, on uh, Sir Bensington. So the armor that you're getting from that Ring of the Teacher and eventually into the Gnome's Wisdom, not really going to do you the most compared to other games, unfortunately. So yeah. I'm not a huge fan of that pickup, honestly. Still going to be able to get that um, mana regen aspect of it, but... Yeah, I can agree with you. Uh, not necessarily the best pickup, the most optimal pickup, but maybe he just wants to be no-tail. I mean, who doesn't want to be no-tail, really? <laughs> he's got to get post haste in, a portal key. I mean, go. he's got a long way to go. Um, action could be coming up in the bottom lane. There's the graveyard turn into the hammer throw. The rotten grass will finish him off. Witch Lair was hit by a bat blast, but it looks like... Uh, Wretched Hag probably not going to be able to close the distance. In fact, Defensive Master's Call going to be going in. There's the Nightfall on the Witch Lair, but a nice timing on the Graveyard, so not going <laughs> to save him enough. And it looks like this one's going to keep going. Oh, Torch of Chain Reactions will miss right there. The Joust comes through. The Lance along trying to finish off Deadwood. It's not going to happen, though. And now Sir Bensington is Sir Dead. Wretched Hag, the stuns come out. He will fall as well. And Deadwood lives throughout all of that. That was... <laughs> That's just hilarious. I love the animation of Sir Ben. He actually fell off the horse right there when he actually got Falcon to punch. Uh, so that was just uh, kind of funny. But, uh, you know, again, seeing this hero, we are getting some information on this hero now for the first time seeing it on Honcast here since the introduction this last Friday. His ultimate, when he lands, there's a, there's a slight delay when he lands and when he can actually use his abilities. And we kind of saw right there where if you're quick enough, as Witch Slayer was, he graveyard stunned basically as Sir to landed. And so he was locked down when he first landed. So you can, you can definitely respond to him pretty effectively if you're ready for it, it seems like. And yeah. that's actually what they did right there. So well played on their part. Very, very well played there by uh, Suburban Serb. But right now, Pebble's cool. going to take a silver bullet right into the defensive master's call. So great timing coming in from Dusty there, almost assuredly saving his good buddy Manhua. And, so, uh, so mannered. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> Darn, yeah. A little bit more mannered than uh, what uh, we're used to I would have had other words of choice. Somebody over here. <laughs> yeah, Pan, man, that guy, filthy mouth at 37 years old. It's, I guess when you live that long, you know. <laughs> I'm 24. <laughs> oh. You guys know that. He actually came on my. I got him to come on mic and it worked. There you go. You're welcome, guys. Yeah, you were. Yeah, you were. You were totally live. Him in is the ultimate troll, by he, the way. He really is. It's impossible to tell if he's telling the truth. <laughs> like, ever. I, he, he actually had me okay, going for a solid, on. like, 15 minutes this morning, and I doing just had no hits? clue what I was doing. Bottom lane, Wretched Hag may be in some trouble. There's the Willowmaker. Auto attacks going in, and yes, Wretched Hag will fall. So a nice kill on that one. Bensington up in the top lane, oh. trying to run away from Witch Slayer, but there's the Hex going to be coming out. <laughs> going to use the Nightfall onto Witch Slayer, maybe buying time until he has a Joust. Defensive Master's call, but there's the Weed Spirit on top of the Hammer Throw. I and love it. Uh, he can't get out of there. I love this hero. I love this. He's just fun, man. I mean, <laughs> it's like, I'm about to die. Let me jump in the air five miles in the air and then slam down at the same exact spot and then die five seconds later. It, you know, I obviously, again, I get the idea. It does make you invulnerable, of course, and you're trying to make a getaway. Nice combination, by, by the way. Poor man's portal key coming out here in the middle lane. Pebbles with the follow-up. So like, a couple of auto attacks. Is it going to be enough? Yes, it is. The Impelvin is activated, though. Ports are coming in. Can Deadwood get at least a response for his fallen teammate? Unfortunately, he cannot. So uh, in the end, the kill is successful with little to no loss right there. Uh, but yeah, Sir Bensington had help coming in. You can definitely see moments like that where if he's about to die, he has help barely there. He uses his ultimate in the air, and it just buys him a couple seconds maybe for that support to get there. But that wasn't the case there. Yeah. It just simply was more of a, uh, I kind of want to use this for not really well, a big reason. He actually did have one second on the joust when he hit the ground. So he might have been able to get the escape, but in this case, there was just a little bit too much stun. Hammer Storm Burbot on Witch Slayer. Yeah, they'll lock you down pretty good. Yeah. Well, that Wretched checks. Hag and uh, Tempest able to get the tower in the bottom lane, though. So nice job utilizing the distraction up in the top to get the tower across the map. And things are uh, looking all right for the Legion team. Pebbles yeah, they are. Pretty close to that PK. Well, you know, I was going to say, I'm actually, honestly, a little bit surprised that the lead is it's looking uh, uh, decent here for the Hellborn side as far as this game has started. You know, you got nearly 300 gold per minute on a Hammer Storm. He's actually choosing to go the Mighty Blade first as well as some a good amount of buildup in general. Um, so not going to be going, you know, there, there's actually several options. I could, you, you got anything from another Parasite to an Insanitarius to an early Portal Key. 
Um, if you are going to be playing a carry storm, a shrunken head is definitely good, especially against this Legion team. I think that's the biggest thing when, when you know when you really do look at it. The shrunken head is actually going to choose prove to be a very efficient pickup here. He's going to activate the ultimate, and he this is where he really hits hard. Now the defense master call it disappears immediately. It's only level one. The joust away though is going to be enough for Sir Benzington. Hammerstorm chasing hammer in three, two, one. Just out of range. Just out of range. Oh, I think it's going to be it. It goes back in. Oh, the ultimate! Oh, beautiful! Sir Benzington, you're crazy! <laughs> <laughs> He's still alive! He dodged! Oh, he dodged it! Wait, he dodged the Hammerstorm stun? Is that what happened? Yeah. I he, totally missed that he, part. He was invulnerable okay. when the Hammerstorm stun got thrown right there. Oh, if he had hilarious. had any kind of support coming in, that would yeah, have been absolutely for the gorgeous. But his team was busy taking a tower there in the middle lane. Uh, really, really well played, though, by not jungling. Uh, once again, if he had had that support, it could have been a really, really big play. Not to be in this case, but they'd buy time for that tower. And now his team going to be doing some rotating. So it looks like there will be four in this top lane. Going to look to push this third tier one tower. That would have been epic. I, I would have loved to see Tempest port that. He did have, as you said, I know they were pushing, but God, that could have been big if he ported it in there, got an ultimate off, and they could have turned that around. But yeah, the fact that he even just turned the hammer to a stone was actually pretty damn cool. Uh, despite me not even even realizing it right off the bat, but towers being exchanged for one another right there in the meantime. So, Hellborn team still remaining slightly ahead and actually going to try to get further ahead. Witch Slayer and Myrmidon roaming in, trying to get a catch. A random graveyard stun, not going to hit anybody though. And in the end, they will all be fine. Devil with that portal key, however, he's going to find Wretched Hack, Falcon Punch, maybe. Yo, oh. a little bit slow. Sometimes you just got to let it rip with a hope yeah. and a prayer there and. In this case, Wretched Hag was just a little bit too quick on the trigger, but Edward falls back, grabs a double damage. He'll live to fight another day, and that fight might be middle as Hammerstorm is going to activate the Galvanize, getting him the increased armor and attacks er, and movement speed. But look at all the Legion here. Bricky, they want this fight. Yeah. Acid Bomb going to be going down for more anti push than anything else. Devils does have that portal key, so look for that to be the initiation from this Legion team, but we could have a 10-man on or a ten man encounter right yeah. now. 10 on 10, wouldn't that be fun? Devil gets jumped off to the side. All five do collapse on him. He goes down now. Torture doing a good amount of damage there in the process, but it does set up the kill. Nightfall not used by Sir Pensington there. Devil doesn't have a buyback either, and if you're the Hellborn team here, I don't know what they're thinking sticking around, honestly. You lost your Deadwood. You lost a good chunk of initiation and a good chance to win this fight. Now, Retro did point to the bottom lane, so it actually is now a four versus four here. But in the end, it doesn't look like any exchanging is ultimately going to happen. Pebbles, obviously, the portal key himself. Also going to continue to look for that opportunity. As Hammerstorm will uh, continue to farm it. There's the job. Witch Slayer again, still hanging around. He's going to be chucked in. And Pebbles' teammates uh, do the job, do his bidding, basically. <laughs> it was kind of a funky looking joust there. Yeah. From Sir Benzington kind of careening off to the side. Fortunately, unlike Cthulhuvent, uh, doesn't cancel his ability if he hits a wall. Uh, those are always the funniest when yeah. Cthulhuvent just charges into a pixel <laughs> and just barely even moves. <laughs> it's it's so dang frustrating. But Benzie not having that problem. And, uh, well, this thing. nice job. I, I was actually a little bit surprised that Pebbles went in there. He was really low on life, ended up swapping to int or excuse me, uh, low on mana. And ended up swapping to those int treads. Had about uh, 260 mana, so was able to at least get that chuck off. And uh, team was able to clean up, so always a nice kill. And with that, I mean, the Legion team looking pretty good as far as uh, ward vision goes. Covering a lot of that middle lane and getting a couple of counter wards down. Did manage to counter one Hellborn ward there in the middle. And definitely uh, trying to get aggressive in this game. A couple more things I'm noticing about this Hammerstorm is actually all that thought we might have initiation in the middle lane. Pebbles does have an invis, and he's going to jump push there once again. The team support coming in. Not going to get their time, though. Jossie just into the weed field. Team of the message call using on Sir Benzington. I think he meant to use it on Pebbles. They're both going to end up falling right there. Oh, no. That was a train wreck. Not going as planned. Myrmidon chasing Wretched Hag right there. She'll blink away, though, and going to be fine. That obviously all happening without your Deadwood, who's just farming at the bottom lane. So, yeah, a little bit of overextension there, to say the least. Also a good response, though. 
Yeah, from very good response team. from the Hellborn, and uh, nice shot from Witchlayer. He, he's gotten really good levels for being a yeah, part of this. he's higher level than Hammerstorm. Yeah, <laughs> for being part of that tri-lane that became a 11 now. Uh, choosing not to go Steam Boots, they're not super tanky in that fashion, but still with nearly a thousand life from Mystic Vestments, and had a lot of power supply charges that he was able to pop there to survive. The Hellborn team going to try to bring down this tower, but they need to be careful. Tempest is lying in wait, does have an elemental void. And there's even going to be a stun that is used by Mr. Witchslayer. And Pebble's going to go in. There. Combo's down torture immediately, but the heck's going to be going off. There's the Hammerstorm stun on the tube, and Nightfall's going up. Oh, the Nightfall jumping in the background. He pulls him in with the Royal Stop right there. That tap is ultimate, pulling a devil as well in the background. He will eventually fall, so not the best coordination going out. Uh, Good oh. President of to make that Myrmidon getting chucked back. So he just does miss with that waveform being used, and Hammerstorm goes back in to throw out a stun before they're all going to have to fall back. But this is going to be a massive push here from the Legion side. No buybacks to be had. Tempest Ultimate is down, but this should at least be another tower kill here. And it'll probably stop after that. But a good, a good chunk of momentum being picked up by our Legion team. And your, your hammer storm, you're nearby. You're, you're not going to do anything. Yeah, you're going to fall back as the tower will fall right there. And they got what a joke falling back themselves. So well fought right there indeed by both sides. Like I said, Sir Bennington had a good idea, but the rest of his team was actually busy finishing off Deadwood in the background. Oh, he was trying to pull them in. Now they did get the kill eventually on the follow-up, but uh, yeah, just good execution overall on the side of what a joke. Now, I want to go to the point I had earlier with Hammerstorm here. So mm -hmm. again, the choice to go stronger to edit, one thing is that obviously the likelihood of him going for an Elder Parasite now is definitely taken back. And I personally am a big fan of Elder Parasite. Again, though, I completely understand that with this game. I actually do agree for this circumstance. I think the Shorkinette is the better choice here. So uh, I do like that. Now, I think you could argue at the same time that maybe going the Insanitaries first for more of a, more of some, some more farming potential, at least hitting a little bit harder, could you could argue for it. But it's, still, it's fine in the end. Now, the thing where I'm not necessarily in agreement with his builds, his stat builds, or skill build even, he chose to go level 4 Galvanize. Now, the thing with that, it mm. does not increase your movement speed. The movement speed stays the same, of course, at 14%. What that does is it increases the armor amount, as well as the decrease of the cooldown, which is definitely beneficial. But the armor increase, again, isn't, kinda, isn't doing a whole lot for you in the end, as this is a very magic-heavy team. So I think the points, honestly, could have been spent better, even as stats. If not, you can argue leveling up that mighty swing for the farming purpose. But Master of Farms actually going to jump right there by Deadwood. Deep in the Master's Call going to be his own self. Will it be enough? The Silver Bullet comes out. It will be enough. And down goes Master of Arms. Yeah, going to take the fall right there. Nice job. By the Hellborn team making the expedition in there to grab a, a pretty nice pick, grabbing some of that momentum back. But uh, to talk about what you were mentioning there before with Hammerstorm, I, I definitely agree with you. If you're going to go those four points and galvanize, that's generally a build that you're doing. If you're going to be a really, really heavy ganker, the way that Hammerstorm has been playing so far, he, he's been sitting back more in that farming role. Something like the Insanitaries, the Alchemist Bones, or even that Elder Parasite first with some points either into the stats or the Mighty Swing definitely would favor him more, in my opinion. So going a little bit of a funky build here, but in the end, he does finish up the Shrunken Head. Now, he's going to be able to stand tall in these team fights, but he's still going to have to be really weary of that Tempest Elemental Void. That's going to go right through the Shrunken Head, and if he gets caught in one of those, he's not tanky enough, even with that Shrunken Head activated, to probably survive through that. The raw auto attacks will most likely bring him down, so... Got to be very, very careful about the positioning and in the upcoming team fights. Yeah, and even further to that, he can have Tempest and Shrunken Head. And shrunken head. I mean, he's getting towards his Shrunken Head. He actually has a Mighty Blade picked up. And I'm looking over here at the Hellborn side. There is nothing, absolutely nothing, that can stop this Tempest if he gets that Shrunken Head off going with an ultimate, of course. And Sir Bendleton, in the meantime, he needs to be careful right here. He's going to chouse through the trees and over the ledge. Miramadon is chasing Kenny. Maybe going to match a carp off a weed field. Uh, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to. He does weed feel, but just out of range. And Sir Bensington will be fine. Now, obviously, he is going for the Staff of the Master. And, of course, that makes his ultimate global. I'm pretty sure that's all it does. Increases range to global. And, oh, I guess it also increases the damage done on top of that. So, some damage increase as well. And uh, that's going to be something to be a little feared of if you're TGY. Yes, but at the same time, it's also it's kind of like that Sand Wraith effect, where if he happens to be pushing bottom while there's a fight about to happen up top yeah. lane, it's like, well, he can continue to push. Not the biggest deal that he's not there at least yet. He'll eventually be able to join you as the fight takes place. So it's gonna, it actually is a very good tool for him, I would think. And I'm excited to see him picking it up here, actually. Yeah, certainly pretty strong. And I don't claim to be an expert on Sir Bensington. Yeah. I haven't seen him too much in the competitive scene. And 
So if he wants to go this and that's what he's comfortable with, then by all means, more power to him. And bottom lane, that TP will be canceled. So it's going to require Torture walking all the way back. And interesting, I mean, I'm pretty sure there was just five Hellborn showing in the top lane. If the Legion did see that teleport canceled, which they should have, they should have known that they had actually a little bit more time where they could actually have a power play on that tower, meaning that they were going to be up at least one player. But in this case, chose to retreat. Nothing wrong with playing it safe. Now, as I am thinking about it here against the staff of the Master, I'm actually... <laughs> I, I think he could have been better off going for something like a lot more utility style, something like the Energizer earlier on into, into you know, even a Talbot of Command, being more utility for this team rather than that Global Presence. Because, again, if they had something like a Sand Wraith that also brings Global Presence to the board as far as aggression goes, then it would make a lot more sense in that synergy is concerned. Or at the very least, maybe if he was focusing more on the carry style of hero, then you could argue, again, if he happens to be in one lane pushing himself farming while the team is trying to defend elsewhere, then that could be a benefit to have it too. But the more I'm thinking about it, I'm actually not uh, the biggest fan as far as the, the likelihood of it being an effective here. But again, I'm happy to see it just because of what it does in the end uh, for him. And he actually does finish it right there. So It's fun to watch. It, it is going to be fun to, to know that he can just jump anywhere on the map now uh, as long as he uh, you know, spots those enemies, of course. So... It's going to be fun to see that come into play. Yeah. We'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, speaking of shrunken heads, though, nice. Pebbles just going to be finishing one up there. So opting to go for the first item, shrunken head. I mean, sometimes we'll see that Soul's Bulwark, maybe even uh, something like uh, Grim or Power next, but really wanting that uh, protection from stuns. And I 100% agree with this Pebbles pickup here. Just because of the high number of stuns, the high number of CC, the magic damage, and the immobilizes that are coming out on this Hellborn team, it's going to be an absolute nightmare for a melee hero to actually traverse all that if you don't have that shrunken head. Mm -hmm. And that's actually probably what I'd like to see coming out next on Sir Benzington. Yeah, speaking on him, you can definitely uh, vouch for that, of course, as far as that is concerned. Again, uh, I... I I think for the most part, you know, just building more of that utility, and obviously a shrunken head just in general could really any hero, but uh, even more of something like a crowd control, again, like a tablet, like the Energizer still, I could still think it would be beneficial, but Sheepstick's actually coming along here on Wretched Hag, and that's obviously a great, great pickup for him, as that's really going to be the first item that it goes into here, so choosing to pass up that light brand route himself, which uh, you could definitely also be somewhat critical about, but... At the same time, having a sheep stick here in the near future. Good news for them. Witch Slayer finds a little toy right here in Master Farms. Throwing out the combo. The Weep comes out. There's a silver bullet. And a quick death onto Master of Arms. But Witch Slayer showing off also his portal key. I don't even think he used it right there. But he does have a portal key now. Top lane, Sir Bensington actually in deep. Just going to choose to TP on out, knowing that Hammerstorm's done is already used. Good heads up play there. And, uh, yeah, very, very smart. And that's what you talked about, being able to really, really split push those lanes. He was able to just TP home. Could have leapt back out into the fray if there was a fight going on, but instead we'll just be farm, farm, farming away. And uh, that's kind of what it seems like this game has really become in the last couple of minutes. Both teams, instead of uh, trying to actively seek fights, they're looking for more positioning, looking for map vision, and, and deflecting the aggression more so. Mm -hmm. The Hellborn team's very aggressive wards in the enemy jungle are going to be expiring right here. So any kind of foray that they want to make needs to be in the next 15, 20 seconds. And sure enough, they're hitting the jungle. Redon's kind of leading the way. He still has a little red booty, sack, so He does finish a tablet of command, though. So pretty good item pick up there. Devwood jumps in. Wants to go for a but he's going to be shut down. Here comes the Bat Blossom. Return to Chief is the message call on a return Sir Bensington, of course, joins the party. Nightfall going to be used right here. It's used on a torture lock. Oh, oh the Tab Assault in. And that's the combination that you're looking oh for. The Royal Stomp, the Joust. <laughs> <laughs> and a double tap for Sir Pensington. I think it came together there uh, for our Legion side. It certainly did, pulling them all into the middle. Calling that uh, Chunks is making plays right there. And uh, whoever Chunks is, <laughs> I assure you that if he had a part in that, then he certainly was making plays. Beautiful, beautiful coordination by this Legion team. And uh, well, the Chuck forward <laughs> onto, onto that Tempest. That was a poor man's portal key. It, Am I, am I was that, that? I was gonna say, yeah, I he doesn't so. have point. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was so focused on the Sir Bensington to be honest, but uh, yeah, that that actually makes sense. It sounds like in chat that's actually what happened right there. 
And actually, okay, let's take a look back there real quickly. As they do push at the bottom lane, not going to fall back. So yeah, let, let's watch again. That also was damn entertaining. Uh, so there's the Sheepstick initially on Deadwood. It's like, oh, not the best armor for the Hellborn team. He gets locked down. Then maybe they have an opening, but here we go. The Legion Pursuit. Watch for the poor man's portal queue. Yep. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> oh, oh, man. Brett Favre that right was, there. Just that was hitting the 60-yard pass and going all the way to put six on the board, man. Yeah. Oh, that was gorgeous. That's what I love seeing wombo combos come together. And I mean, maybe not the womboest of combos, but uh, <laughs> it, it certainly got at least part of it. That was pretty. Well, well, you know, the poor man's portal key, I, I just love, love, love seeing that, uh, that Chuck used that way. It, it's an awesome way to use that ability. And uh, that, that was just awesome. Awesome to watch right there coming out from the leading side. So Sir Benzington, he actually ports back to base. He has 2,400 gold saved up. Okay, there's the mighty blade. As you're hinting towards uh, maybe a shark at himself too, and we're seeing a lot of those this game, man. That that could be the third one over there. There's already one, the second one coming on the Hellborn side. Uh, they wanted that Bensington. Uh, weren't there two there? There were. They despawned. Uh, I think. Uh, I think. Or they died really, really fast. I think they just died really fast. And, but my point being that Dewitt, he used his Falcon Punch. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah, that's oh. why I'm sitting here like... All right. It seemed pretty obvious. I mean... <laughs> yeah. I mean... <laughs> but, okay. uh, oops. <laughs> a little bit on tilt, perhaps, after the last fight. They're still in awe of that uh, crazy four months look themselves, I guess. Uh, top tower goes down in exchange for the bottom tower. But look at the middle lane also being pushed by Sir Benzington, so kind of my favorite lead inside. But actually, the base is going to start being pressure now by our Hellborn team. We'll see what, what a joke does here. They are going to start responding, it looks like. Yeah, response in mass. That's going to be four TPs. And Shrunken Head on Pebbles immediately. Going to be comboing Torture. The Nightfall going to be going off in the background. It's going to hit four players right here, doing a ton of damage. Torture going to be taking a lot, but Hammerstorm going to be going hard right here. On to Sir Benzington in the backfield. Deadwood is taken out. Hammerstorm going to be trying to run away with the Shrunken Head activated. Hits a creep with the yeah. big hit, and Hammerstorm going to be going down. The Hellborn team falling apart a little bit. Yeah, and we see the chase continuing. Torture barely alive. One more auto attack. He gets top at four, so that could be the saving grace, at least for now. But Wretched of course, has that blink coming up. Which they're trying to go for the TP. No, oh, the sheep. He had a sheep. <laughs> but he couldn't use it in time. Torture does get away in the process. And everyone else will be fine. Obviously, you're still happy for what a joke. And, uh, you know, it's, that was just... Uh, well, well played for one, but okay. So, so two things again. We saw the we saw the downside of Sir Benzington once again. He jumped in with the nightfall. He literally could not do anything after though. He could not joust. He could not uh, use his royal stomp. He got locked down as soon as he hit the ground, and he almost died because of it. But you know, because of his team being so far ahead at this point, uh, they were able to fight strong and, and come through in the end. And, but also the other thing is we saw Hammerstorm. And, you know, I hate being critical, but in the end, you know, we want to give our opinions on what we think of these things, especially at this point in an event like this. So, I, I, I not, I hate the build person. I just hate the the build here from Hammerstorm choosing to go the portal key, especially in a game like this when when you were building to be that more of a carry presence for your team, yeah. that hard hitter. He went more the initiator build here. He went the shrunken head into a portal key, and it just doesn't work that well. And we even saw that last fight when with the brute strength. I mean, you do plenty of damage still. But he wasn't hitting nearly as hard or fast even as he would have with other items, such as the you know, Sanitarius, the Elder Parasite, the Soul's Bulwark, and the Demonic, just things like that. So things not coming together all of a sudden for the Hellborn side. And the other side of the spectrum, though, what a joke is loving the game now. <laughs> yeah, they they certainly are. They've got their cooldowns back up here. In the next few seconds for another big Wombo combo, you got the Shrunken Head coming online for Sir Bensington. And, and Breaky, yeah, I, I got to agree with you with this Hammerstorm build. You've got plenty of initiation between Deadwood and Witchlayer. I mean, hell, you've even got the Torturer that's got a Shrunken Head. He'll probably be going for a Portal Key next. You really don't need to be going that Portal Key yourself on Hammerstorm. Getting some increased damage, getting some that raw right click is really what your team needs you for. And, uh, well, in this case, it didn't quite work out. He might be on his way to go pick up double damage. That does spawn here at the top lane. And uh, that could certainly amp his damage up to the point that he's going to be doing a considerable amount. Instead, it will be Deadwood bottling it up. Wouldn't be surprised to see that donated over to Hammerstorm for, for a future team fight. Well, that and also, you could try to even ninja a conger with that if possible. Now, the pit, there is this ward of sight here, so you would need to counter ward that first, most likely. But double damage on a Hammerstorm, again, 
Even with minimal damage items, with that brute strength activated, he hits very, very hard. So something like that could be possible, but in the end, they're going to try to roam around here into the Ancients. They're going to kill us off first. Now they're going to look for an opportunity as uh, Sir Benzington kind of pushing out the middle lane, but he too will start to fall back, and uh, TGYS instead will now group up here in the middle lane. So you can tell kind of TGYS a little unsure of exactly what they want to do here. I mean, still in the Ancients is good and everything, but uh, you, you definitely got to make something happen. Wretched Hag is getting more and more farm. She's actually working towards a Frost of Skull. How about that? Ice Brand picked up on top of the Blessed Orb. Um, so she's kind of bulking up as well as going to be uh, a little bit more of a right damage right click damage presence now that attack I, modifier here. I actually really really like the Frost Wolf Skull pick up on Ratchet Hag here. Um, as she did not go really one of those tankier items earlier, this is going to provide her with a little bit of that presence and of course the huge slow on the Hammer Storm through the Shrunken Head. He's already really lacking on attack speed. You reduce that by an additional 20% mm -hmm. and, and he's really going to be just kind of crawling along with those attacks. The Hellborn team, they're, they're really looking for a fight right now. They want to be fighting before they can. Uh, the Legion team's able to get any more of those big items online, but even this one, unless they're able to somehow catch somebody, this is going to be a very, very difficult one. Yeah, even though, uh, to be honest, even though it would have been a little awkward, I kind of disagree. I, I actually would have preferred to see... Oh, actually, he plays okay. right into the... The Fat Plus goes off! He gets Falcon Punch! Tavis jumps in as well! Pebbles running the party! The Nightfall coming out! Dead will go down! The trees have disappeared! And Hammerstorm will fall as well! And it is just going to start falling apart enough for the Helper team! Despite Wretched Axe's death, she is knocked by him and coming back, but it doesn't matter. Hattrick, there's oh, the Elemental nice. Void! It was not used before! He saves it for now, and a good choice at that. Torture the sole survivor. He says, come at me, bro. I'm going to kill at least one of you. No, you're not. The quad kill finished for Sir Bensington. And again, that was with the start of killing Wretched Ag as quick as they did. But GG well players are coming out. There's a vote to concede, and that'll do it. Uh, that was a kind of a fun way to finish, I guess. So, I, you know, I was just simply going to say about Wretched Hag, I, I, I still think that Grimoire power, more damage presence could have probably been better. But in the end, you know, it's it's done, so whatever, right? <laughs> they, get, they get the job done. What a joke exactly. is moving on. And uh, they got to be happy with that in the end. So congratulations to them. Um, T2IS. As I kind of expected, to be honest, I, you know, they seem like they were a little less of an experienced team, even yeah. though we're down to, what, five teams remaining in this tournament. Not as much experience, but hey, that's why that's why you play these tournaments. That's yeah. why you play these tournaments, and, they, you know, they got their first match here in Honkast, so hopefully they had fun with that at least, and, you know, learn from your mistakes, as we always like to go back to. So hopefully they can do that at least. Uh, when it comes, let's actually take a look at that final fight one more time here, Beef. I just want to see Hag. It was just uh, pretty hilarious. He's like, I'm going to blink right into you guys. Hello. <laughs> just reverse and back and forth. Please, Pan Man. No, that was uh, definitely very, very fun right there as uh, Wretched Hag just pops in, says hello, says, hey, guys, I showed up for uh, noontime tea right there. And just so many shrunken heads going off from the Legion squad. And as you can see right here in a moment, Tempest, of course, did not burn that elemental void until the very last second. There's the portal key forward and the capture of the final two heroes. So makes it a wrap with those two kills. And a very, very nice job from What a Joke. And they're going to be advancing into the loser's bracket round of two here, the top four. And their next match is going to be a money match. Yeah, that's actually a good point. So with four teams remaining now, you win this match, you actually guarantee yourself a uh, third place uh, at finish, which guarantees you at least a portion of that $1,500 prize pool. So uh, definitely very important here. They're going to be matched up against the winner of Ultimate Legends and Alan's Awesome Group, I think. Yeah, Alan's Awesome <laughs> Group. I, I don't know who Alan is, but apparently he's freaking awesome and he's got a group <laughs> with him. I'm actually checking to see if that other game has – it looks like it has finished – yeah, Cream's definitely not in a yeah. match right now. So, uh, maybe 7.30, check. that's today, right? Yeah, it looks like this might be the match here, actually. Uh, yeah, Absolute Legends, they uh, they won the match, to say the least. Ultimate Legends. Yeah, oh, ulti yeah you're right. <laughs> I saw Cream's <laughs> and, you know, just think, oh, absolutely, you're right. Ultimate Legends, excuse me. Ultimate Legends, they do win the match. You know, they're looking to play Absolute Legends in the Grand Finals eventually. Of course, they're waiting there. Wouldn't that be fun? Ultimate versus Absolute, which is a stronger... We can maybe find out eventually, but <laughs> we might <laughs> actually see the Battle of the Legends there in the Grand Finals. But uh, before that, we, of course, yeah. do have that round of two. And that's going to be 
the well, Ultimate Legends team versus the team we just saw win here. What a joke. What yeah. a joke. And, I mean, that should actually be a pretty dang good match. We've seen what a joke twice now. Yeah. And they, they've looked pretty strong. So uh, we'll see how they're going to match up against players like Creams and uh, QQ Noodle and yeah. Woody Fly. I, I would definitely lean towards Ultimate Legends, of course. I mean, I definitely would. But... What a joke. Hey, it's a chance for them to really prove themselves now. You Absolutely. know, they, they've got Cassidy on Honkast now a couple times. Here's a chance where, hey, you beat Ultimate Legends, and all of a sudden people are going to be in your Okay, these guys, yeah. These guys are pretty solid, actually. <laughs> how how crazy start, would uh, that be? I mean, looking into these guys. Eliminated in the round of 512, I yeah, believe. They, in the in Hunter Hunter qualifiers, tour, yeah. And then make it into the top three of the Alienware NA event. It's just crazy <laughs> stuff going on right now. <laughs> it's just crazy absolutely stuff. insane, but... Good game there, Breaky. It was, it was. So with that still, ladies and gentlemen, we have to take a break right here. We're going to get that next game set up. But Ultimate Legends versus What a Joke is going to be coming up here shortly on Honcast. I'm Breaky CBK. This is Beef over here. Stay tuned. We're having some fun here tonight. we got one more game coming up. We'll be back with that great match ahead of us. Yeah, Stay tuned. we will.